Rock Eyes would like to welcome DT Swirl. Hey, man, what's going on? Not much, man. Actually, well, I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say not much. A little bit of everything right now. I am, I am soaking up some California sunshine and and talking to you out in New Jersey. <laughs> right. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. It's a little cool here today, but uh, and, you know, we've been having a lot of bad thunderstorms and stuff like that. But like, you know, right after it, it turns to ninety degrees, and you know, we got to pop on the air and and you know, just enjoy yourself. So the first time I, I really got turned on to Swirl was two thousand nine when you opened up for the Bullet Boys at Dingbats in New. Jersey, and uh, you guys really impressed me. But what really impresses me is the music that I recently heard, uh, you know, on the website of Swirl and stuff like that, uh, the CD, uh, um, you know, Swirl uh, uh, Fourth of July and stuff like that. Uh, actually, I, I really liked a song called Time to Fly. Um, I, I just liked it a lot. You know, right on, man. Thank you. That seems to be the uh, the lead dog track off of the uh, off of the Swirl CD. The band is called Swirl. The new disc is called Swirl. So you know, it's kind of a statement CD by us. Um, you know, it's it's one of of the songs that has done very well for us. We've had about three others from that CD that got licensed into a film. Fourth of July is the summer single for 2015. So, you know, that's, we're already four or five songs into that CD with, in terms of just the amount of exposure and, and positive response that it's getting. So, Right. Well, your debut, um, I, I guess, CD was really out of nowhere. Um, you know, you had uh, Carlos Cavaza uh, from uh, Quiet Right and Rat uh, producing with uh, Matt Thor of rough cut, rough cut and stuff like that but like how did you really get your start in the beginning uh you know when you're really like uh, an independent band and stuff like that and uh, you know it's not easy to break into music at all these days you know <laughs> No, it's, it's really not. Um, you know, it, it's funny you mention Carlos because, quite honestly, he, he had a lot to do with it. Um, I guess, I guess the real way it started though was uh, attended a couple of Nam shows, and one of the first Nam shows I ever attended out in Anaheim. Um, you know, I, I, I was looking, it's just walking around, staring at all the different instruments and seeing all of these different, you know, music industry professionals that, that you know, had some, some, some success. And, you know, I kind of, I kind of adopted the attitude with a few of them that I had wanted to meet that, hey, you know, the only real difference between you and I is, you've got your shot and I haven't had mine yet. Right. And so rather than just come around and, and chase you for autographs, I was, I was hitting people up saying, Hey, you know, have you got any projects? Have you got anything going on that, uh, that I could maybe get involved in? And, and a couple of people, um, not even guys in the necessarily in, in the rock game, but uh, a couple of artists were like, you know what? That is a great approach to have and take advantage of this opportunity. So, yeah, we'd love to help you out. Um, so, you know, I kept in contact with those guys. Um, then finally, Carlos Cavazzo came into the picture. Uh, I, had, I had known of him, obviously, through his Quiet Riot days. There's a, uh, I think it's pretty well documented, a, a pretty public story about, you know, how he and I had met for the first time. If not, I will be more than happy to run it down for you. It's actually kind of funny. Uh, but we managed to stay in touch and, uh, and as things progressed, he's, he's one of my absolute best friends, and, and he was like, look, man, you need to come to Southern California, and, you know, if you're going to do this, you really need to pursue it here. So I made the jump here, and Carlos said, well, since you're here, let me produce a record for you. That was the Out of Nowhere record, and uh, things kind of really took off from there. Right. You're, you're lucky you didn't come east, you know, because, you know, the music scene here is uh, really disappointing. You know, I mean, there's good bands, there's bad bands, but that, there's really nowhere to play no more, you know, here. You know, that's kind of becoming the case everywhere, I'm, I'm sad to say. Um, you know, I mean, there, there are nowhere near as many venues uh, in Southern California to play as, as there were. Um, so, you know, and then when we when the band tours, you know, like we're getting ready to go out again and, and we're looking at some of the different venues that we used to play when we traveled before, because um, the last time we toured was 2009, I believe. Right. Um, you know, and some of those venues don't even exist. You know, it's just 
state of, of the economy and, and, you know, the way things are right now. It's a little frustrating, but, you know, that doesn't mean there aren't avenues to get your stuff out there. You just have to do the, do the research and the work, and then you'll be good to go. Right. I, I know a lot of bands now, um, they seem like studio bands. They don't even, you know, tour. Um, I don't know if it's like, uh, you know, just to please the fans or whatever. But, but what's your view on that, just being a studio band? I'm not really, a, well, I'm not at all a fan of the idea, right. but the reality of it is, touring is expensive, um, and and you don't necessarily make any real money when you're on tour. Touring is, is so cost, uh, it's, not, it's, not, it's not very cost effective, so, you know, unless you're selling just a ton of merch and a ton of CDs, which, you know, immediately dovetails right into the nobody buys CDs anymore mindset, um, which I don't find to be completely true. I mean, obviously there's a, a, a you know, an, an overwhelming, you know, amount of people that are, that are very much into downloads and, and things, the MP3s, things of that nature, but, you know, when you are, when you're at a show, you know, I've said it before, you can't, you, I've never autographed an MP3. Yeah. So, you know, people want that physical CD. They, you know, they, they do want it, but they, they tend to only want to pick that up if they are at a show or somewhere where you're in the presence of the person, of the people that created it, which obviously as an artist, you want to be everywhere, but, you know, you're limited in where you can be. So, of course, it's just naturally limits the total number of CDs that you're going to physically sell. Um, as far as being studio projects go, I guess it depends on the genre, but if you're talking rock and roll, I mean, look, rock and roll is a, is a tour, live, in-your-face animal. And so if you don't add that element, I don't really support it. Mm-hmm. Cool. I guess it's about the most polite way I could say it. I don't really... I don't really subscribe to that mentality and I don't think it's all that right now, now all that you, effective <laughs> right yeah definitely you also uh, um, I got a chance to play Rocklahoma that had to be a highlight oh that was great as a matter of fact the Rocklahoma gig was the very first show as uh, the opener for Rat on the East Meets West tour and the Extreme was on that tour as well um so it was uh, it was us first, extreme second, rap third. We went out and played Rocklahoma, and then right after that began a, uh, a five week tour through uh, through North America, which is great. Right. Yeah. Because uh, we were definitely at that the show. biggest crowds we had played to. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We we were at that show. I remember meeting up with you guys and stuff like that after the Dingbats uh, show and uh, headed out to uh, Rocklahoma, and you guys were there. That was a really cool experience. You know. Yeah, yeah. So you know, it's, it's always we're always looking for new places, new new ways to get exposure and, and improve the uh, the brand name of the band. Um, you know, and and that was a great experience. You know, tip my hat to the uh, to the Rat guys for that one. Cool, cool. Now you guys really matured from out of nowhere uh, to to this point in your career and stuff like that. As I said, listening to the new CD, it, it, it's really a. Um, a vast change, at least the sound for me, you know, listen to the Time to Fly and Fourth of July and stuff like that. Well, you know, the, the, the overall sound of the band, I guess the direction is something that I have to credit Brian, uh, Brian Jones, my brother, who's the drummer um, of the band. He really wanted to take things in a different direction. Um, he had a real good vision for what he wanted, and you know the band is is very tight, and and so we were we were like, hey, you know, let's let's go after this. If we're gonna if we're gonna follow this lead, let's let's go after it 100 percent and see what we can create. And you know, the touring helps because you spend so much time together playing that you become tighter as a band. You get to know people that you're playing with, and there's nothing like that. Which kind of goes back to our previous conversation about you know studio bands versus live bands. I mean, I, that's yet another benefit. To, to being a, a live touring band, right? Um, and then you know you you do learn if you pay attention to your craft, I guess. And thank you for noticing. You do you do learn to get a little bit better at songwriting. It didn't hurt to be in the studio with uh, with Fred Corey from uh, from Cinderella, who was helping us with Time to Fly and Mad Disease. Um, so you know when you got a guy like that who's who's obviously sold a few records in his day and, and his band has worked in the studio with some, you know, with a producer of the likes of Andy Johns, you know, you, you can learn quite a bit. I mean, the truth of the matter is Swirl has been fairly fortunate in to, to be in different studio situations with people that have had extremely successful careers in the rock business. 
right, right, right. Now, uh, your recommendation to a new band, what would you tell them to be aware of and things that you would recommend to watch out for? Well, I mean, I never want to really preach because, you know, the reality of it is there's no cut and dried way to do this because if there was, Gene Simmons would own it already, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. But, uh, you know, look, it's, the main thing is working, you know, you got to work hard, but you also got to work smart. Um, and, and my big thing as far as what I've noticed in terms of ways to get yourself out there, you know, besides obviously all the internet marketing and promotion and, and, and touring that you can do and still earn some money at your, at your craft is, is get involved in licensing, you know, which, which is so much easier said than done, but you know, you can really improve the visibility of your band quickly if you can get your songs a song in a in a commercial in a movie um tv show whatever i mean you know swore got really lucky out of the gate we had three songs land in the film pitch day of massacre um which stars emmy award-winning actor bill obris jr so you know we had we got exposure from that um a lot of great reviews a lot of great press about that thing and they're still working on distribution for it so you know there's a good buzz about that film but it hasn't really been given that official release and, and push yet. Um, we're negotiating with two other films, a TV show, and uh, a commercial right now. All of it from the same Swirl CD. And so, you know, those things will provide a, a great amount of, of exposure for the band is, is much more quickly than, you know, sitting at the computer, shooting out, you know, getting getting shooting out your music as there's many places as you can that way. <laughs> right, yeah, definitely. definitely. Now, now, the computer and the internet must be a huge um, help to the band, and, and all bands now, uh, compared to back in the day when you would have to mail a cassette or whatever and stuff like that. Um, is there anything else besides the internet that really helps out a band? Um, still, you know, the things that were, were in place before the internet still work. Because, you know, there were successful bands before the Internet. Right. Um, you know, word of mouth is huge. Right. You know, now the pressure is on you as a band. Like, for example, Swore has a show tomorrow night. Um, we're playing a, like a one-hour show out in Downey, California. You know, but you have to understand when you go on stage now, everybody you're playing to has a smartphone which right. means everybody has cameras and everybody has a direct link to YouTube and, you know, everyone knows how to tweet out or, or post something on Instagram about your band. So it really is in your best interest to be on point every time because, right. you know, it's it, the way people are. It's just the way it is, and you have to understand that going in. You know, you will, as a person, you probably will spend... You know, four times as much energy on something you don't like than you will on talking positively about something that you're, you know, you're into. Right. You know, you might put out one tweet that says, hey, man, I, I saw this band and I thought they were great. But uh, you might put out four or five tweets about, I saw this band, it was terrible. You know, look, right. but for example, we opened the very first show ever for Red Dragon Cartel when they got together out at the Whiskey. Uh -huh. Um so, you know, we were there firsthand to see that show. Um, I, I don't believe it was as bad as the reports were indicating. Right. Even so, the YouTube footage would indicate, because I really don't trust things that are, you know, posted from, from camera phones and thrown up on YouTube. I mean, you know, if you're using that as sound quality, right. it, everything sounds bad. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, but you couldn't... Once the firestorm got rolling in a negative direction, it, that thing was just, you know, it snowballed so quickly. Right. And then, you know, a couple of days later, they, I saw Red Dragon Cartel down in San Diego. Great show. Great show. By all, you know, I'm not saying the first show was, was, was flawless, but it certainly wasn't as bad as, as people were saying. Right. But the amount of energy put towards discussing how negative that was compared to the relative quietness involved in in how great the San Diego show went is it was ridiculous to me. But it's just, you know, you hear it all the time. You know, you people have, you know, that they're 
They're, they're very tough behind the keyboard. <laughs> right, definitely, definitely. Now, now, do you mind people, you know, uh, filming, you know, your shows or whatever? Because I, I just watched uh, yesterday, Sebastian Bach went off the wall because uh, people are, like, filming him with, with, with their cell phones and stuff like that. And he stopped the show, um, you know, because he was so aggravated. He says, you know, you're paying the money, come, you know, to come see us. And, and, you know, all you're doing is, like, got your phone in the air. You know, so does it bother you? It doesn't really bother me because, you know, look, that's the way people attend shows now. Right. You just, you know, I was just telling you, I have a good friend of mine, Kevin, who's with my guitar tech, you know, and he's like, one of his favorite sayings, I kind of adopted it, you know, she can't hold the ocean back with a broom. Right. You know, it's, that's just the way people do it now, you know, um, you could you can't fight city hall. You could spend a lot of energy trying to change it, or you can learn to work within the the framework of what is is the landscape at the moment, and probably move forward more rapidly doing it that way. Right, right. But I mean, it is it is disappointing because I'm a photographer, and when people ask me how the show was, I have no idea. You know, because my my eye is through the lens for the whole show. Sure. So, like, you know, I'm paying. Well, I don't have to pay, but I mean, other people pay. <laughs> right. Other people, you know, pay good money, and, and you know, you could ask them how the show was, and they're going to say, "I have no idea. I'll have to go look at the video that I just shot." You know. So, 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 me, for me, if I was a, a, a an artist, you know, I, I'd be really disappointed, but I'd be also happy because I'm getting press. You know exactly. You know, I mean, and that's the double-edged sword of it. You know, and I know that there there was a time when you know even for ph photographers, you know, the rule was you could you know you shoot the first three songs. Right. You know, um, now that seems to have been abandoned, and, and people shoot the whole show, and you know whatever. I mean, I, it, <laughs> to me, uh, okay. So so what? You got to be really really good for the first three songs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's difficult because a lot of times bands don't don't uh, you know play their you know their best tunes like until middle of set or or a little later, and oh, sure. some of the special things happen. Say you went to see Kiss, all, all the good stuff don't happen until like halfway or almost near the end of the show, and, and you miss out on all of that, you know. And a lot of photographers just shoot the three shows and leave, you know. So yeah, like, I, I, I not me, that, you know. I want to stay because I want to see. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I would hope you want to. <laughs> you know, that's, the, you know, it, that's the reason you're doing this as an artist is, is you're, you're writing and creating music and hopefully, you know, in its, in its totality. Right. Not necessarily, you know, let me just write a bunch of singles. Um, you know, hey, look, I, I, I don't knock anybody for doing whatever works for them. Right. You know, um, I, I'm a big fan of, 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 a, of a complete meal, I guess you call it an album. Right. You know, now, you know, now if you're Jeff Leppard and you're talking hysteria, then, you know, your meal was pretty great because it had seven, you know, singles on there. Right, yeah, <laughs> yep, definitely. Yeah, that would be cool. So what's the next step for Swirl? Um, next up, like I said, we have a show coming up tomorrow in Downey. We have um, a couple more shows we're doing locally where we're waiting on the licensing deals to get finalized. Then the band will be hitting the road. Um, we have had an absolutely incredible spring, and, and it's, our summer is starting off really well in terms of the amount of press that the band is getting, and they're getting it on a global scale. I mean, you know, we've been in the top three um, and on a website in Tokyo since March. We've gotten exposure in Greece and, uh, you know, out in the U.K., um, Germany. So many places outside the U.S. Um, have, have, have reviewed the Swirl CD with, you know, very positive responses. It can all be seen at the, the, the official band website, swirlbeband.com, and then, you know, click on the uh, the Swirl Press button, and, you know, you can start seeing reviews and all that good stuff. Um, 
Yeah, if you, if you, you know, the food being that if you make enough noise, uh, you attack, you attract the attention of the people that you need to in order to take things to the next level. You know, the band does want to definitely get out and tour again in the U.S. and outside of the U.S., so that's kind of where our mindset is to finish 2015 and into 2016. Okay. Um, and then we'll kind of go from there. I mean, obviously, you know, you want to get back in the studio and make another record and kind of kind of move things along that way. But, again, you talk about the changing of the landscape. I mean, there are so many bands. You know, Breaking Benjamin, you know, it's, it's right. been seven years in between albums. You know, The Pretty Reckless is on tour with an album that they did two years ago. You know, it, the, the cycle of new album, new year, new tour just doesn't work anymore. Right. You can spend a considerable amount of time, and you should, you know, promoting, you know, getting your record the right way, getting your album, however you want to call it, whatever your, your, your collection of songs, EP, whatever it is, getting them the way they need to be, and then, you know, invest the time, and, and it is a slower road to hope because there is so much more music out there because it's so much easier for for anyone to write record and immediately put it up online uh but you know at the end of the day look the quality will 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 trump the quantity if you take in the time to to create something that people want to hear they'll find it if you keep pushing it you know that's a major part of it if you sit back and go well you know I wrote some songs, I put it online, come find me. You, right. you might as well give up right now. <laughs> Definitely. When, when I started doing research, uh, you know, for this interview and stuff like that, um, you know, I, I typed in Swirl and, uh, you know, new reviews and stuff like that. And the first review right off the bat was a five out of five stars for the new CD, and that was uh, by a site, a site called The Examiner. Okay? And I, oh, I, yeah. I, I said, holy shit, five out of five, for, first review I read, you know? And, and when you see something like that, you, you know, you, you, you got to figure, man, we accomplished something on this one. Uh, what's your feeling towards that? Well, my, a couple of things. My, I'm, I'm really proud of, obviously, that review. Right. That was great. <laughs> um, you know, a lot of the reviews we've gotten have been, you know, I don't think we've had anything worse than a 7 out of 10. Right. Of course, now that I say that, knock on wood, here comes the next one, and it'll be like, you know, this band is terrible. And <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> But the thing that I'm, I'm really proud of is, you know, we, we touched on the fact that we got into the studio with Carlos and Matt, um, and then we got into the studio with Fred. Uh, what we chose to do, and you talked about the new direction the band went in, what we chose to do was go into the studio with just the band um, and, and some unknown people, and we recorded out in Lake Elsinore, California, and Rosemar, California, um, nowhere near L.A. So we got away from all of the L.A. hype, the, the people in L.A., and took the lessons that we have learned from being in the studio with, with those guys who have had, you know, obviously some success recording, um, and used those lessons to create the bulk of the new Swirl CD. Right. So the responses from reviews, like a place like The Examiner, and, you know, that was a great review for us, not only in terms of the score, but it was great because I, I think that's quite possibly the biggest fan base, readership, following, whatever you want to call it, uh -huh. of one publication right. that, that Swirl has had a review put in for this record. Um, and so to get not only that many, I think it was like well, just under 230 5,000, I don't know like, like on Facebook, there's, there's right. 235,000 likes for the examiner.com. Wow. You know, not that, you know, the, the, the not that, that Facebook likes are everything, but, you know, it's not bad when, right. when you have a place that has, you know, when you're used to dealing in places that have two, three, four, five thousand page likes for it, right. you know, and then you, you know, a guy publishes one and all of a sudden it's 250, close to 250,000. Right. It, not everybody's on Facebook, but you know what? That's that when you can get near a quarter of a million people with one publication, it's not a it's not the worst thing in the world. No, not, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> so extremely happy about that review. Extremely happy about the fact that you know us taking the time and working with you know James Rieger and his wife Carol. Um, not household names, right? But 
they were very much in tune with what we were doing and what we were trying to accomplish, very patient with us, and said, look, you know, that's just when you guys are done, you're done. So we experimented. We tried everything. You know, there were so many things that didn't make this, this right. release that we tried. We're like, you know, let's hear this. Let's try it. Okay, we tried it. No, let's not bother with that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was great to have the freedom to to create and kind of find your own way, and then the result being so positive from people that are that are giving it a listen. Cool, cool, cool. Well, Dwayne, it's uh, a pleasure to talk to you again after six years, and uh, you know, congratulations on the new CD. And um, thank you very you know, much. It's a real pleasure talking to you. Would you like to say anything to the fans out there? Um, you know, the biggest thing I'd like to say once again to all of the uh, all of the ever growing members of the Swirl Society, new people that are coming on board, our old faithful fans that have been here. You know, thanks so much for the support. We are definitely making progress towards uh, towards our world domination goal that I think every band probably has at some point. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I mean, keep checking with the uh, the. We went ahead and and made it as easy as possible. You know, if you're whatever your vice is, if you're a, if you're a Twitter user, an Instagram user, Facebook user, you know, everything is swirl the band. S W I R L T H E P A N D. So you know, I think unless you're on MySpace, in which case it's just swirl. <laughs> <laughs> wow, wow. If you type in swirl the band, you know we we come up and we you know we make it as easy as possible to find us. <laughs> cool, cool. Thanks a lot, Dwayne. I appreciate it. No, hey, thank you very much. I okay. appreciate your time, Brian. Talk to you later, man. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.